Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors by the Longmont American Legion Post 32 Honor Guard. This working? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing if you are able and put your hand over your heart. Veterans have earned the right to render the military salute. Please join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor Guard, order armed. Left face. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the Wind River Arapaho, Northern Arapaho Warriors Color Guard. They will be presenting their colors and saying their pledge. Commander of the Wind River Arapaho Nation Color Guard, please present your colors.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of the Sister City Colors. Please be seated. I'm sure everyone is feeling so privileged because you'll be able to hear from me again after this. But uh, I'm, I'm going to start by, uh, by giving a brief acknowledgement and uh, you might be asking, and I'll tell the story about how this sister, sister city relationship came to be in a little bit, but for now, let it suffice that we acknowledge that Longmont sits on the traditional territory of the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Ute, and other indigenous peoples. Um, in general, as well as specifically today, we honor the history and the living and spiritual connection that the first peoples have with this land that we call home. It is our commitment to face the injustices that occurred when the land was taken and to educate our communities, ourselves, and our children to ensure that these injustices do not happen again. And uh, the one way to make sure that happens is, uh, is uh, an exchange of love, which uh, at least that's how I describe it. I fell in love with the Northern Arapaho over the last three years. So at this time, I'd like to actually move on to the next part of our program, the welcome. 
uh, uh, where is she? Courtney Michelle, I'd like you to come up and give the welcome. Thank you. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Yokoso, Okoshi, Itadaki, Arigato Gazemas. Bienvenidos a todos. Gracias por estar aquí. N2, Bisihet Niteina, Nananana Courtney, Ni Etajana, Ta Antana, Hannah Ye Na Usana. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Janice Rebin, president of Longmont Sister Cities. To the Arapaho tribal, tribal members, welcome home. Longmont's first sister city was created with Chino, Japan in 1991, and a second relationship was formed with Ciudad Guzman, Mexico in 1998. Over 600 students have benefited from these two exchanges over the years. These exchanges expose students to different cultures and create lasting bonds with their host families. Three years ago, a delegation from Longmont comprised of Mayor Bagley city council representatives, city staff, and sister city volunteers visited the Northern Arapaho on the Wind River Reservation. On that trip, we had many conversations and the idea to become sister cities was born. In 2019, Longmont welcomed a student delegation from the reservation. Along with local students, we had our first exchange with the Northern Arapaho. COVID delayed our plans to formalize our relationship in 2020. However, today we are celebrating the, the signing of a historic partnership. This association between the Longmont and Northern Arapaho is unique and hopefully the first of many such partnerships between sovereign nations and local jurisdictions. We have much to learn from each other and together we will build a brighter future. This liaison is a step towards healing and an opportunity to create educational and cultural exchanges for both of our communities. While this friendship is new, already we have many close friends, some we call family. We have had wonderful memories of our visits to the reservation, sharing meals, visiting schools, attending a sweat. There are so many people who have worked really hard over the past three years to make this new celebration possible. We are grateful for your support, understanding, and commitment to this partnership. While it would be impossible to name all, we would like to thank my Mayor Brian Bagley for his dedication to this idea. Mayor, would you like to speak about your experiences? I know everybody here, was, when I left the podium, you're like, oh man, but is he, is, he, is he really coming back? Can't wait. Please, let's hear more from Brian. Please. But no, so uh, no, the, uh, just briefly, I wanted to spend a few minutes that, uh, uh, first and foremost, the story I'm going to tell is uh, a little bit of how this came to be, but the reality is, what's really, really cool is that I literally did nothing for today. No, 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 I'm not, you know, you know, those of you who know me are laughing because I'm lazy. But, but the, uh, what's really cool is this relationship is not my relationship, right? Steve Fasthorse, wait, Steve, stand up for a sec, will you? This is Stephen Fasthorse. Say, take down your... <laughs> Great, I have to have a title to get applause, and I say Steve, and all of a sudden he's that cool? Yeah. No, so Steve is my, uh, I consider Steve my brother, and uh, uh, one day... I saw a YouTube video and uh, was talking about the Lakota Sioux and, uh, and, and a reservation out in South Dakota, and I got this idea that, hey, I wonder, wonder if it would be worthwhile to reach out and see if uh, one of the, the tribes that used to frequent uh, these lands would be interested in having a sister city relationship. 
And I asked that question, and everybody thought it was stupid. And uh, if you know me, I don't, I, don't, I don't really listen to people. And so uh, uh, I was in the city office over there on 3rd, and Carmen Ramirez, Car where's Carmen? Oh, there, there she is. And so Carmen, Carmen was in the office, and I said, hey, Carmen, 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 Carmen. And we hadn't talked that much before then, right? I was just some loudmouth guy. And, uh, and Carmen, uh, I said, how you doing, Carmen? She goes, good, good. I, said, I got a question for you. I got this idea. And uh, she kind of shook her head. And on one hand, I could tell she's like, you're an idiot. And on the other hand, she's like, but bless your heart, you know? And she said, you know what? Instead of going to South Dakota, you need to meet with the Arapaho, the southern and the northern Arapaho are here in Boulder. Every year they have a group called, uh, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Rights Relationships uh, Boulder, yes. And so they get together about once a year and they would invite the northern Arapaho down and I was told by Carmen, they're here. You should go introduce yourself. Just, just good luck with that, but go. So Carmen told me to go. And so I took that literally, and I showed up, and I didn't realize that it would be a, I mean, imagine some guy walking in the door in the back and just coming to the stage and starting to talk with Steve, right? We'd be like, we're having an event here. And so I didn't know, and so I showed up, <laughs> and I talked to Steve. And we kept talking. They kicked me out of the event because Steve and I got along so well. Uh, he got my number. Uh, I don't remember who called who. But uh, we started hanging out, going to dinner. He was on the business council. He invited me up. I went up again, this time with staff and city management and council was wonderful. Um, I believe at that time, Polly Christensen went up with me. Um, I don't know who else went up um, from council at that time. It was a, new it was a different council. Bonnie Finley went up. And, uh, and so it was, it was uh, and I remember when we went up, um, everybody, I was gung-ho. You know, the Longmont City staff and council were kind of like, well, we're gung-ho. And I know that the business council and your staff were a little bit like, what? You sure? What's going on here? And when we presented the idea, I remember they were all quiet. And they said, yeah, we, I don't know if our elders are going to go for this. That You've got to get their permission. I mean, and so uh, uh, we're lucky enough to have, uh, I don't know what happened. There he is, Nelson, Nelson White Eagle, Nelson White Sr., who is, you know, that's a man you should clap for. So, the, and, and uh, if the ceremonial elders hadn't trusted me and trusted us to be able to start something, this would have never happened. And given the history of this particular area of this nation and uh, the multi-generational trauma that's been, that's been caused by everybody in the past upon these wonderful people, you know, trusting me and trusting us to do something like this is, is a big deal. And I remember the first time I remember the first time um, I met a ceremonial leader was actually Nelson and his brother Crawford, who I loved very much, and their brother Herb. And yeah, right here. And so, and so just, uh, just to let so we're there for dinner and a meeting with, uh, with the, uh, the elders of, of the tribe. And afterwards, about 11 o'clock at night, and everyone's left, and I think Steve and I were the last ones in the room. And there is these three little old men in the back sitting down. And I was like, oh, look, senior citizens, too tired to go home. How cute. You know, how cute, you know. And uh, I go over there, and I'm going to go introduce myself, you know, not really understand. And, oh, by the way, Carmen made me go everywhere with Ray originally. Ray's right there. So Ray, <laughs> Ray, 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 was, Ray was my guide. So Ray, I didn't know protocol, I didn't know anything, he, I, I don't know anything about anything, but Ray, in this particular topic, he's been a, a, a tribal CEO running, running the tribal affairs. He also worked with uh, uh, NARF, the Native, Americans right, Native American Rights Foundation, has relationships um, with First Nations here in Longmont. And so he, you know, whenever I'd screw up, he'd, he'd, he'd pull my, my clothes, and you don't say that, you don't do that, do this, do that. And he, he kind of trained me like a puppy. But this particular day, Crawford, Nelson, and Herb were sitting in the back, and uh, they're all veterans. Um, Crawford and Nelson had on their Purple Hearts hats, and I think they were wearing sunglasses at the time. And I went to introduce myself, and their brother Herb spoke for them. And Herb said, this just, and I introduced myself, and he says, you need to have respect. These, these are the elders of our tribe. These are our ceremonial leaders. This is our pipe keeper. The pipe keeper is the apex of the ceremonial leadership is, their, is basically their chief. And so uh, 
uh, that, that right there began the relationship um, between Longmont and the Northern Arapaho leadership, the, both the business council and the so ceremonial leaders. And um, over, the t over that, they, they, uh, I, 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 could, I could tell a story that goes on for hours and hours about all the really neat relationship type stuff that we've done over the last three years. And uh, I cannot even begin to express in words the, the feelings and uh, the love and the respect and appreciation that has grown between, between our two, or our, our sister res, I guess you could call it, because uh, they're more than a city. Um, and uh, I just want to publicly acknowledge and thank once more Nelson White Eagle Sr. for uh, letting this happen and participating as much as you have. And especially, and I loved your brother, and I wish I'd miss him, and I wish he were here to see this and participate. And so he, Crawford uh, made this, uh, this bolo. Everybody goes, well, where'd you get this from? Crawford made this. And when I wear it, I'm thinking of him and honoring the part he played in this. So um, uh, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do now. Introduce, who am I introducing? Oh, Lee Spoonhunter. So Lee, but don't clap for Lee yet. I haven't said his title. He's not as cool as Steve or Carmen. So no, I'm just kidding, Lee, you're pretty cool. So Lee, um, Lee uh, was the chairman of the business council um, uh, when, when we started this relationship. And he's the co-chair now, but him and the current, he's the co-chair and the current chair, they tied the vote. And so he becomes the chair again in December. And so we're fortunate enough to have um, uh, uh, co-chairman Spoon Hunter here to sign the official documents when it's time. So thank you for coming, Lee. And uh, now you can clap. Uh, so I'm going to turn the time over to you, Lee. Mayor Bagley is a tough act to follow. <laughs> so first of all, as an Arapaho, my fellow Arapaho's here on stage and out there, we are home. We're here. I just want to thank uh, Mayor Bagley, uh, Janice, and Courtney, the City Council, and all the other Longmont dignitaries and uh, county and state dignitaries that are here with us today. I want to say thank you for, for welcoming us. Yesterday, I was very fortunate to be able to go to Estes Park for the first time. And uh, after 44, 44 years of living, I finally went up to Estes Park along with, with one of my best friends. And as you come down, as you all know, as you come down the mountain into the valley, it is so beautiful, so beautiful. And one of my coworkers was telling me that earlier this spring, early summer, he had done the same thing and it, would be, it was his first time. And he's over 40 years of age also. And, and he shared a thought with me and he said, now I understand why our Rappo people chose this land where to live, especially here in Estes Park and in Longmont and Boulder and Denver. You know, uh, talking, one of our elders said, you know, we still have our paints, our cedars, and our water, that's who we are as Rappo people. You know, a very humble and sincere, loving and respectful people, and that's who we are, and that's what makes Colorado our home. And I just wanted to share that with you all today. <laughs> today, you know, uh, Brian talked a little bit about him and Councilman Fast Horse's meeting in Boulder that would become fate for all of us together. And it is something that started out as a, as a meeting between two elected leaders and then a friendship and then a bond, you know, and, and now brothers. And that's how we see all of you in Longmont. We see you as family. Every time that I've come down here, I always say meeting with people from the community and people from, from the city uh, government now, you all are our family. Uh, you all came up and, and seen us over three years ago at, at home, and you learned who we are. Uh, it's 
that in Wyoming, unfortunately, doesn't happen. You know, we have people that are not Indian who live around us and amongst us. And yet today, as we've seen um, uh, these past few years, that unfortunately racism is alive and well here in America. And that is our job and our responsibility to combat that with the love and respect that you all see here today. That is how we will overcome that. So I was, I was doing my homework on sister cities and I was thinking, what can I say? What can I bring to the table that's gonna be unique in a speech among our people today? And I looked and saw that sister cities was formed under President Eisenhower, if I'm correct. And uh, it was formed city, by cities, uh, counties, uh, states, those kind of jurisdictions, but never with a tribal sovereign nation. And I know Mayor Brian Bagley went to Sister Cities with this idea years ago and the first attempt they told, uh, Mayor Bagley said they told him no. And look at us today, uh, the city of Longmont and a tribal sovereign nation together is building a Sister Cities partnership. And it's going to be beautiful. As you see our, our future generations sitting in front of us students from, here in Longmont and students from the Wind River Reservation. You, we, I was asked to talk about what are the goals and what are some of the things we intend to accomplish. Well, we are a trailblazer today, each of us, working together, both the sister city of Longmont and the Northern Rapa tribe. The sky's the limit for us. We are a sovereign nation working with our sister city, and we are going to blaze a trail, hopefully, that many other cities and counties and states and other jurisdictions will do with other tribes, so that we together, as working together as family, as sister cities, will blaze a trail, and this time in America, we'll get it right. Now, now a, lo a lot of this, and I'm putting him on the spot, but I do think we need to recognize him, and that is Councilman Stephen Fasthorse, his tireless work with the city of Boulder and the city of Longmont and with Colorado is why we are here today. So, Steve, I just want you to come up and say a few words, because this wouldn't be possible without you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> I want to say thank you to everyone that is here. This is a very big moment, you know, and I really appreciate all of you for, for taking the time out of your day to be here for this event. Because again, for us as a leadership, you know, it's our role and responsibility to try and find what it is going to be that we can produce to help our children, you know, our youth for those who are gonna be coming after us. And the way that we have always looked at it as Arapaho is, you know, we always look for the generations that are to come yet. You know, and as part of our job and responsibility is to change that and, and ensure protection that those generations are able to have success, have opportunity, and have the things that we didn't have, you know, and, and be able to aspire and help them do the things that we wish we could have done, but yet also help to encourage them to go even further and go beyond, you know, anything that we have ever done, you know, and, and that's probably the biggest uh, push for this whole effort was to try and change that, that path, you know, so that our kids can come back to our homeland that we have always so so much yearned for, you know, because where we are in Wyoming on the Wind River Indian Reservation, you know, we, we were forced upon those lands and forced upon another another tribe. 
to, to have to accept us to be on that land. And that has always been a, a big, I guess you could say, a, a big void, you know, for us as a, as a people. Because when we sit there and try to reflect on our history, to reflect on our past, we can only go so far because we're on lands that we originally didn't call home. The lands that we originally called home are here. As Chairman mentioned, you know, Estes Park, Cherry Creek, all of these areas. Uh, there, there's a tree that is no longer, it might have got burned in the Fort Collins area, but it was called the, the Council Tree. It was a tree that a lot of tribes used to come to and congregate as, as leaders and chiefs of their tribes and have discussions together. And that's along the front range here. Those areas are very significant to us and something that our people have, have never been able to do. Uh, right now, I believe in Boulder, Colorado, they're renaming a park. It's called Settlers Park. But they've inquired and, and con consulted with a lot of the tribes to, to rename that park from Settlers Park to, I believe they want to call it our people's park to represent all the nations that used to frequent this area. But one thing about that park, Settlers Park was originally the winter camp of one of uh, the chiefs. As, as you guys know it, uh, Niowa, but there is a Rapaho word for, for, for Niowa. Can somebody help me? Nawa is the true way to say his name. Now, that was his winter camp, and it was very hard for us as Arapaho to try and participate in this, uh, <clears throat> this consultation because it was very significant to us as a winter camp, but yet we also had to recognize all the other tribes because we weren't the only ones. But again, we made sure that it was mentioned that that was one of our chiefs' winter camps um, and how that came to be, you know. And, and so again, it's, it's things like that that I want our children to know. I want our children to be here and be able to walk into the mountains and, and some of these trails and some of these waterways and know and understand that it was our ancestors and their moxin footprints that are still there. The ceremonies that they did and the medicines that they used are still here. And so I hope one day that you all as a community, along with our kids and our youth, will have that opportunity to take our kids to some of these areas because they were very significant to us. And the medicine that has been used for time immemorial, those medicines are still within all these areas. And I hope that during one of these adventures of our youth, that they're able to capture that, feel that, and regain and help, help restore. I appreciate you guys all, and you know, I just look forward to this, and I can't wait to hear good stories from the Sister Cities organization. You know, I appreciate you all, and I hope that one day we're all able to have a really good understanding, and I hope that we can see some of your community in our community so that you guys can experience and learn the, the value system that, that we go by as Rapo people. Aho. As you know, we're part of an international organization. Uh, Longmont Sister Cities has been a sister city organization since uh, it's 31 years at this point. And it is my honor and pleasure to introduce Carol Lopez, president of Sister Cities International.
Oftentimes, I'm Carol Lopez. When I give speeches, I always say, well, I'm honored to be here today. Well, I'm more than honored to be here today. This is such a historical day, and for me, this has been such a meaningful day. And I want to thank the officials of Longmont. I want to thank the leaders of the Arapaho Nation that are here today. And I want to specifically acknowledge all the youth that are here today. And I want to apologize to the young people for the world we're leaving you. We're leaving you horrible problems to solve. And it's only going to be through young people working together, learning together, that we're going to be able to solve such issues as climate change, the social injustice in this world, and just talking to you some today. I know you're up to the task. But we need behind you, supporting you every way. And I can tell that the Arapaho Nation and the community of Longmont is here behind you. This week, Sister Cities International is celebrating its 65th anniversary, which is exciting. General Eisenhower, after seeing the horrors of World War II, said we have to do something. We cannot resolve our conflicts through military action, killing, devastation. And he knew that when people know each other, they don't want to fight with each other. Because when we learn from each other, we gain mutual respect and understanding. And we have done this internationally. We have over 2,000 partnerships around the world. But in the United States, we haven't found a way to find peace with each other. And it's time that we find peace with each other. And this sister city relationship is going to promote mutual respect and understanding. And that's phenomenal because when we learn from each other, we know each other, we realize how much we actually have in common. We all want the same things. We all want to be able to have meals to eat, to be able to have health care, to be able to provide for our children. We want the same things. We want peace. But I'd remiss if not saying the United States has a very troubled past. We have many, many things that we need to find re reconciliation about that we need to come back and look back at these. We can no longer just keep covering up. And I think that's what's happening in the United States today. And part of the reason it's happening is our young people. And I think many of us have hungered for these dialogues to take place. And we have to continue these dialogues if the United States of America is really going to live up to everything that we need this country to be. Today, we saw some amazing veterans. And I'm so proud of our veterans. And many of you probably already notice, know this. But as a population group, Native Americans serve at a higher percentage than any other group in our armed forces. So when people talk about patriotism, I'll tell you, it's our first nations that understood patriotism more than any other group. But together, we can do so much. So today, we're having this signing. And I know President Eisenhower is looking down at us. And he is saying, great. It's about time to have this signing today to bring communities together. I can tell you that the Sister Cities website has this whole event on it. And I was in Washington last week, and we were committed to creating more of these partnerships. And it's because of the courage of Mayor Bagley, the Longmont City Council, and the Arapaho Nation to come together and say, we need a new way. We need a way to bring ourselves together and learn from each other. This is what will strengthen the United States. So I've said enough. It's such a joy to be here today. 
I do believe our creator puts us in the right place at the right time. And when I got this invitation, I, I responded maybe, but I immediately went to work to figure out how I could be here today. So thank you for having me. I wish you all the best. And to our young people, be brave. <laughs> I'd like to welcome to the stage our youth representatives from both communities. So I'd like to invite Carmen Ramirez and Brendan Harjo to the stage to help us with the gift exchange. The pipe, asked, the pipe keepers ask that you accept on his behalf, Lee, okay? So Carmen asked me to share with all of you these blankets were made with the Northern Apple symbol and the Sister City symbol and this blanket here is being presented to our pipe keeper, Mr. Nelson White Sr. <laughs> yeah, he, he is an avid Denver Bronco fan so he's going to love that bag. <laughs>
one of the cool things that I've learned or, and observed from uh, the tribe is that every time they have a get-together, they do a giveaway. And so uh, congratulations, Jum Circle. We're saying thank you. We had blankets made for the drum circle as well for coming down and playing for us. And then the next set of gifts is for the honor guard who are, who are, who are willing to come down and present colors for us, those, those three from the Northern Arapaho Nation. <laughs> Could I have the Northern Arapaho Business Council um, come on up? So we've um, created a commemorative poster of this event, um, which we will have Chairman, uh, Co-Chairman Spoonhunter and Mayor Bagley sign, but I will show it what it looks like. And the Northern Arapaho Business Council will each receive one of these posters. Can I have the members of my planning committee come up? Um, Courtney, Cherie, Sam, Jenny, Patricio. Um, am I missing anybody? Oh, Sue Bolton. Come on up, Sue. So uh, 
Janice and Court and Courtney, right? Right there. Uh, we have special gifts for you for being uh, the leaders of helping all of this. Uh, we had shawls made by one of our tribal members, and so Brendan is going to show you it, and then we want you to put them on. Janice. Courtney. Also, the boys are going to go grab it because it's heavy, but Mayor Brian Bagley and if the city council will come forward, we have a gift for you all from the Northern Arapaho tribe. And I just want to, I just want to recognize as they're coming up, they're all here. We've got Susie Doggle Faring, we've got Joan Peck, Polly Christensen, Martian Martin, and Dr. Tim Waters. Okay, so we should have the gift coming out here. And what I'm gonna do while uh, we, we get it out here to present is I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain what it, what it means here. And this is something that we hope you guys will enjoy and uh, have in your, your hall or in your administration building. The Arapaho flag was created in 1936 as a sign of respect and remembrance for the Arapaho war veterans. The three colors used each have a different meaning and symbolism. Red is for the people, black so the people will be strong and unfearing of death, white represents knowledge to be passed on to the young, the seven stripes each represent one of the seven medicines of life. The white triangle signifies the way one begins a prayer. Great spirit, that's the way I want it. The circle in the exact center of the triangle is black on the left because that's where the heart is. The right side of the circle is red representing the human side for our happiness, strength, and sorrowful ways. The white line dividing the two spheres represents the great spirit, so we will not forget who created us. The entire circle represents the world, the center of our lives. The Rapho people approved and adopted the flag in 1956. I hope. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, council members. We appreciate you guys. And again, I know we've also gifted you guys a star quilt that was made by another one of our uh, tribal members. And this here has been made by one of our tribal members also. And so again, we thank you and uh, hope you guys uh, are able to uh, find a nice place to uh, represent our, our uh, relationship together. So thank you. And just, just so everybody knows, that star quilt he referred to hangs over in City Hall in our, in our primary entryway. So if everyone could return to their seats. Um, this, this official signing ceremony is over, but it wouldn't be a celebration if we didn't have some entertainment. Um, and first up, the uh, Northern Arapaho brought their drum circle. Uh, we tried to think of what in Longmont would be s representative of our community along with, the, uh, with drums. 
And so we now have the Longmont High School drum line. We will now have the opportunity to enjoy traditional Arapaho dances and the Ethity Eagle Drum Circle. We're short staffed.
KLB. Are you going to be announced? It's my honor to introduce Harvey Spoonhunter, who is going to describe the dances for us. <laughs> right, good job. Well, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> Why? He none ain't it. An ass none not. Someone in Tana. An AC. Oh, no, I sent him a mess. Oh, he sent it. One here, and there, that's done. I never said, No, God, near he, Nelson White. There's nothing, nothing. Missing in there, best in the town. No, I need nothing, nothing. And the man had, and it's not. Nina Anna, Mataia, Nibahia. So I'd like to thank, before I speak, I asked my older brother, Nelson White Eagle, senior, and all my elders to excuse me for speaking before them. If I make any mistakes or say anything wrong, it's just part of our tradition, our respect for our elders. So with that, we'll go on with some entertainment. But uh, before I get, begin, I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Bagley. Bagley. He said he was going to come and sing with us, and he was going to do lip sync. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see him, really going. <laughs> <laughs> He's singing his heart out. <laughs> Before we get started, like with any of our performances, we have our Eagle Drum Society. It's called the Eagle Drum Drum Group. And each one of these singers that you see before you, they're inducted into the society. We have our drum keeper, like our pipe keeper, we have our drum keeper. Mr. Michael Ridgebear. <laughs> Mr. Richard, Richard Brown. I'm not going to know what Ms. Marlon Spoonhunter. Mr. Ellison Sage, Sr. Theron, Theron Spoonhunter. We have Felicia Anlo, <laughs> Helen Yellow Bear, <laughs> Carrie White Anlo. We had one of our other drummers, uh, Blaze Yellow Bear. What we're going to start out with is what we call the grand entry. And the grand entry is the epitome 
a song and dance. What you're going to see before you is a, par a parade of dancers with all their spectacular regalia. Each dancer has their own style of dance. We're going to show you a different style of dancing. Each dancer has their own regalia. There's no one regalia that's exactly alike. And there's thousands and thousands of Native American dancers and not one regalia is alike. And a lot of these uh, regalia that you see before you, it takes years and years. A lot of them are handed down from generation to generation, but it, they're very special to the dancer. It has a lot of meaning, significance, symbolism. So with that, Oi, Nia Hia. Okay, in, in our Native American culture, dance is a way of expression, a language in itself. And it, it promotes community interaction and mediation. Dances tell stories. They're used as a medium for prayers. And each dance has its own significant meaning. So our first dance we want to share with you is what we call the men and ladies traditional dance. And these dances are the oldest form of dances. And they usually tell a story. And they have the beauty of the, of the eagle. The men's traditional usually signifies when the warriors or the hunters would come home from a hunting party or a battle or a horse raid. They would come home and they would tell a story. And it was up to the people in the village to read their story. It was usually told of an exhibition or a deed in battle. And with a woman's, it's more of a subtle, graceful type of dance. And what that signifies, when the ladies would raise their hand, they would be watching out for their sons, their husbands, or brothers, coming home from a battle. And by raising their eagle fan, they were welcome them back home. Why? Yeah, yeah.
Okay, next style of dance is what we call the men's grass dance. And uh, the chicken dance. <laughs> Grass dance is one of the oldest and most widely used dances in Native American culture. It was a job of the grass dancers to flatten the grass in the arena before other important celebrations. The name grass dance was actually derived from the old custom of tying braids of sweet grass to the dancers' belts, which produced a swaying effect. The grass dance was considered only a man's dance. It is thought to have originated with the Northern Plains Indians, especially the Omaha, Ponca, and the Dakota Sioux tribes. Native American culture is full of old legends that connect many different rituals with stories of, of ancient ancestors that lived in harmony with the nature. The legend of the grass dance talks about a handicapped Northern Plains boy who had a desire to dance. After consulting a medicine man, he was instructed to seek inspiration on a prairie. Following the advice of the medicine man, he went out alone on the plains where he had a vision of himself dancing in the style of the swaying grasses. This is what you'll see before you. Hi. Okay, the next dance we're going to share is what we call the women's jingle dress dance. Women are considered the backbone of tribal nations. Women's traditional dance is a very graceful dance that requires concentration and stamina. With movements that are very focused, it can seem as though dancers are floating along the ground as they dip and sway to the rhythm of the drum. Throughout the dance, the women stay connected to Mother Earth at all times. By always keeping one foot attached to her as they move in time with the drum. The woman's jingle dress originates from the Ojibwe people. It is a healing dance and is considered to be based on a young Ojibwe woman's dream. Jingle dress dances are often called upon to dance for the sick or injured. In order to be a jingle dress dancer, one must dream of becoming one. This dress is adorned with 365 cones one to represent each day of the year, and each cone contains a prayer. Right.
our last dance will be, our next dance will be the men's fancy feather dance. This dance is fast-paced, colorful, and highly energetic. The, neat, the dancer needs to have a lot of stamina and strength to maintain all the extremely athletic movements for an extended period of time. The dance regalia is bold and colorful, adding to the impact of this dance. It often includes brightly colored feather bustles and headwear. Leggings, moccasins, Fancy dancers are the most common seen in public powwows today, and it has become a competitive sport in the intertribal powwow gatherings. Hi, Nia Hia. Nia Nia. You notice that dance, he's got to stop right on time, keep right in time with the drum. Stops right on time. I used to do that. But, but now when I, when I stop, my, my belly keeps moving. <laughs> okay, the last dance we want to share with you is women's fancy shawl dance. The women's fancy shawl dance is considered a fairly new dance among Native American tribes. The regalia worn is bright, colorful, well adorned with beadwork or a plate. It is said that the fancy shawl dance is an adaption of the ceremonial butterfly dance. Native American legend associates this dance and its regalia to young Native American woman as she transitions from a child to a young lady. Just like a butterfly. Hi, you're here.
I'd like to thank you for sharing our culture with you in this spiritual and meaningful event. At this time, I'd, I'd, like, uh, I'd like all the dancers to, I would be amiss if they didn't mention their names. Uh, Dr. Teresa Spoonhunter, I'm a professor at Central Wyoming College, um, and I'd like to say thank you to all the dancers who answered my call to come and perform. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is DeAndre Augustine. Hello, I'm Maurice Gardner. Hello, uh, my name is, sorry. I could take my mask down. Uh, my name is Herb Augustine. I'm a member of the Northern Arapaho tribe. And uh, half of these kids you see here are mine. And uh, <laughs> got my son and my daughters over here, my wife. Thank you. My name's Antonio Zolarzano. My, my name's Mateo Zolzano. Hello, everyone. My name is Brittany Augustine, and this is my daughter, Amaryllis Augustine. Um, my name is Rihanna Spudunter. Hello, my name is Taya Spudunter. My name is Ayana Spudunter. My name is Danela Augustine. I'd like to thank the Business Council for allowing us to come share part of our culture. Thank you. Ha ho. <laughs> we have one final group that is going to perform here today. Um, they uh, are, represent a special part of our community. They grew up in the Longmont Youth Center, along with some of these kids down here in the front row. Um, they uh, continue to work with youth in our community. Um, they have a special energy um, that is unique and a style of dance. So it is. Whoops. Uh, while we're waiting for this, the jingles to die down here, um, I do really want to thank the Eagle Drum Group for honoring us with your performance. Along with all of our other performers, we're really pleased that you took the time out of your life, especially our youth. As you've noticed, we're a lot about youth in this area, and um, in both communities, youth are really important to us. So without further ado, you guys ready? All right, I'm going to get out of your way.
hands for Break Effect, everybody. Woo! Break Effect, Longmont, Colorado. Woo! Show them some love, big applause, one more time. Woo! And Break Effect. Well, that's a tough act to follow. Um, thankfully, I don't have to. Um, I would invite everyone to join us in the courtyard for a performance with Bridget Law and Tiaro. Uh, there also will be lemonade and water out there, because I'm sure everybody's a little parched at this point. Thank you so much for coming. I would be remiss if I didn't thank the Longmont Multicultural Action Committee for partially funding some of tonight's performances and hotel rooms. So thank you for those representatives. Thank you to the American Legion, to our wonderful uh, Rapaho Color Guard, uh, the Eagle Drum Group, all of our dancers, and especially all of our youth. We have great faith in you. Thank you.